Donald Trump, who just won, uh, uh, well, we projected to be the winner of the South Carolina primary right at closing and, and went right to the microphone. Of course, we, we are always sort of balancing these twin imperatives as a news organization, which is that individual is likely to be one of the two major party nominees for the presidency, uh, and voters should see who that person is, and not in a, a filtered and protected way. But of course, when we do that, then he says a lot of things that are untrue. Um, for instance, he talked about um, prisons, jails, mental institutions, asylums, and terrorists coming over the border. He said one which, which is baseless, but 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 a, a key point, he factually said that um, he fixed the border, that the it had never been as bad. The, the, the record apprehensions uh, actually happened December 2019, before COVID. Uh, he talked about the auto workers being with him. The UAW has endorsed Joe Biden. And he also said he got a million more votes in 2020, which I think was a re referral to the big lie that he won the election, that he actually lost by 7 million votes. Um, Chris, there's also one note for the, from, I guess I would say, the Taylor Swift campaign and the conspiracy theorists who were everywhere two weeks ago saying that there was a, a, a concerted effort by the NFL to help uh, Joe Biden become the next president, yes. standing directly behind Donald was Trump. Was that Woody Johnson? Was Woody Johnson. I thought it was Woody Johnson. Wife. Woody Johnson, the owner of the New York Jets. Yeah, I was like, I think that's Woody Johnson. Um, he was, so, uh, he was there. He was there. Swamy that, and his big, deep plans about the, what the NFL is up to. Tell me what Woody was doing there. Woody Johnson up there a Along with a bunch of South Carolina officials, including you heard him um, mention the governor, Henry McMaster, who's the uh, well, governor well, of South Carolina. Mr. Governor, because yes. he doesn't know his name. <laughs> now, if Joe Biden <laughs> was on a stage with a governor and said Mr. Governor, because he couldn't at that moment think of the name, there would be headlines everywhere. And when Donald Trump was doing his initial thanks, it was to his family. Yep. He also looked and their names. And if you want to <laughs> re-roll the tape, you'll see him reading, reading the notes from True. notes, beginning with the word Melania, which he got wrong yesterday. He called her Mercedes yesterday in his speech. So yes, there's a presidential candidate who doesn't get his wife's name right, but you won't find out about that among the headline writers but and Florence, political perhaps coverage. it would be easier to get her name right if she were standing next to him at the podium, yeah. but alas, she is not. Rachel, do you have a specific thought? I'm going to go to Joy after that about what we saw there. I mean, again, not, you know, it, it, it was not as sort of petulant and aggrieved towards Nikki Haley uh, as the last time. He was basically not talking about her, but, but it was the shtick that we all know so well. Yes. I mean, there's all the weirdness of it. He did have to read his... <laughs> The names of his, his immediate family's family name, yeah. members mm -hmm. off of a off of a off of a card. He did get them all um, right. And it's uh, yes, it's true. Um, there's that. There's the you know saying that the auto workers are with him when, as you mentioned, the auto workers just endorsed um, Joe Biden. But in terms of, I mean, what else do you look for in, in a speech like that? He didn't go on the offensive against Haley. He talked about the Republican Party being unified. That is a normal thing to say. He then even tried to credit what he described as the people standing behind me, who he described as. National officials, state officials, they're state officials, but they're really national. They're the most important state officials in the country. The state, it's the country. Like, what, what, what are you talking about? Um, so there's a, there's a, 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 it's not even stylistic. There's a, there's a general incoherence, um, Uncle, Uncle Ramble standards mm -hmm. um, <laughs> thing going on with him that doesn't get a lot of attention because the mainstream press, particularly the print press, has much more enjoyed talking about Joe Biden. Biden, uh, and the signs of his age. But Trump is rambling and incoherent even when he is at his best and even when it's early in the evening. And tonight, even just getting that slice of it is a real reminder of that, which, again, is Nikki Haley's main message, right? Nikki Haley's right. mainly arguing both Trump and Biden are unfit. You should pick me instead. Republicans don't want to pick her instead. But the manifest unfitness of Donald Trump for the basics of campaigning are on display every time he gets behind a mic. To, to that point, yeah. there was a very interesting note that he made, Joy. Uh, he, he, he went, he popped on Truth Social at one point in the aftermath of the, the her report and 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 uh, the, that sort of news cycle of coverage that Lawrence just alluded to in Rachel as well to say, no, no, it's not that Joe Biden's too old; he's incompetent, which I thought was interesting because he he seems to at least understand that being two years younger than the sitting president, two and a half years younger than the sitting president, and also that Nikki Haley's main argument, right, is that the two men are essentially in the same category. That it does not help him actually to lean into. <laughs> that particular argument and seemed self-aware yeah. enough to try to cut that <laughs> off of the pass in that moment. <laughs>
<laughs> Wait, but can I just pause on a second? Did did Rachel just call him Uncle Rambles? <laughs> did, I, did I hear the Uncle Rambles? I feel like I heard Uncle Rambles, and Ramble I can't stand. unhear Uncle, it, and I love it Uncle, so much. Uncle, <laughs> Uncle Ramble standing. It's a version yeah. of grandstanding, Ramble standing. but it's <laughs> Uncle Ramble standing, and it's a it's a it's a variety of Rip Van Winkling, actually, if you want to get down to it. Yeah. <laughs> when I steal that, I want you to know that in my mind I will be giving you credit, but I'm going to steal it. I'm just, I'm letting you know in advance, Rachel Maddow. Um, so, yeah, I, I, look, I think one of the other reasons Donald Trump doesn't go after Nikki Haley and doesn't go after the age thing is that that is not the purpose of him running for president. I think mm -hmm. you always have to remember when you're hearing Donald Trump that the thing that motivates him most in running for president is fear. It is fear of going to prison. It is the fact that he knows that he is facing multiple felony accounts. And recall that one of the things that's happening that his campaign was screaming about earlier is the fact that there is a member of the RNC trying to draft a resolution that would prevent the party from paying his legal bills. So he's thinking about having to pay Tish James a lot of money. He's thinking about having to pay a lot of money out in settlements, including to E. Jean Carroll. And he's thinking about staying out of jail. How does he do that? Donald Trump only speaks to one animating feature of the Republican base, and that is demographic panic. And so that's what he leans into when he's in front of an audience of his fans. There are people coming over the border. They're coming out of insane asylums. They're coming to kill you. They're going to get here any minute unless you immediately make me president so that I don't go to jail. Yep.